Hello everyone, in today's video, we are going to talk about how to swap data sources in Power BI. Today, my problem statement is, I have a Power BI report and I want to swap the data source and keep my existing query changes and my report front page. How can I do it? So this usually happens when you are usually using an Excel local file as a POC, then later you want to move to a SharePoint data source location, FTP location, or some other data database location. Or some similar cases is you have been using some on-premises database and then you swapped your data source to be some new cloud databases such as some Azure SQL database or Amazon Redshift. So you want to swap your data source. Let's go through some quick notes before we get started. The first thing is the UI and the Power BI is based on January 2021. And the second point is this method only works on the Power BI import mode. For the live connection mode, you can just use data source settings and to swap the data source. The third point is your old data source and the new data source should have the same sets of headers, which means you should at least not fewer fields in the new data source because Power BI, when they swap the new data source, they cannot find some fields on columns and will return some error messages. And also note that your headers usually is case sensitive. So make sure they are aligned. The last thing and the most important thing is before you do this, remember to save your PBIX file. Remember to save it. Save it. And there is no undo button in this. So again, one last time, save your PBIX file before you do this. Today's demo is very simple. I have a Power BI. It's built on my local Excel file, and I'm going to swap that to a cloud SharePoint data, data source. So for some of you, you know, this is from Excel data source into web data source. And the second point is the assumption is my original local Excel file and my SharePoint data file had the same header. And the last thing is you can use the same methods for any data combination, database to database, database to local, any combination. There are five steps to do it, and they are very easy. The first one is you are going to save your current PBX file. And the second thing is you are going to create a brand new PBX file as if you are going to load this new data source. So then you are going to just load it. The third thing is open this your new PBX files, transform data, and go to advanced editor. We are going to identify the code before the first hash key, and we're going to copy that. Then we're going to the old data sources, transform data, advanced editor, and we're going to also identify the code before the first hash key, and we're going to paste and replace the old code, and then close and apply. Very simple. Let's start with my POC report. The data source, let's check, is from my C drive, and it is a file format. My goal here is to swap that into a web resource, which comes from a Microsoft Team online resource. I'm going to close it, save this file. Then I'm going to hit File and hit New to create a new Power BI report. After I open my new report, I'm going to load my new data source. I click Get Data, go into Web, and I paste my new data source address. Click OK. And after I passing my authentication, I'm going to navigate to my data source. I already know I'm going to load my sheet too. I'm going to click that and click load. Great, now my new data source has been loaded. I go into my transform data, I right click sheet two, then I go to advanced editor. I'm going to identify what are the code before my first hash key. I'm going to copy everything, including the comma at the end. I'm going to hit copy and I click done. And I'm good with this new file. I'm going to minimize it. This is my original file. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to the 
transform data. Right click the data source that I want to swap. I go to advanced editor. Identify the first hash key and the code before that. Now, this time I'm going to paste. And that's it. Click done. And I'm going to hit close and apply. Let's look at the number changes. Okay, now this data source has finished swapping and we are using the new data source. And if you take a look, all the report front page are not changed at all. And my query editors, I added some steps. They are all remain here. So now you look at the, the file we created, you can tell our purpose is just use that to generate the code and we don't need that anymore. We can just close it and we don't even need to save it. And that's the demo. Let's talk about some additional troubleshoot and advanced topic here. So the first thing is we recommend just only to copy and paste the code that you use to load your data. By that thing, I'm going to the query editor and I go into the advanced editor. You can, you can see here the remaining steps are the other query changes that our Power BI developers made. They might promote headers, change types, insert some new merge columns. You don't even need to know what those codes are. You just need to know you, you don't want to touch those and you only want to change the source. The second piece is double check if you have added comma. By comma, we mean here is if you're going to advanced editor and if you forget to copy the comma, it will say a token comma expected. So just double check your every end line to see if you have added that. If you, once you add the comma, the error will be gone. The third thing is sometimes you will see some error messages says your data source type is wrong. If you encounter something like that, it sometimes it happens when you have a number field, but your new data source contains some text and it results some error. In that case, you can find if you have in your apply step, you have changed type step and you can see what that is and you can just remove this step, click delete. And usually this error can be gone and click delete. The fourth thing is if you run into some other error messages or you want to deep dive into the code, you, you are going to click the advanced editor to sit down and really doing some deep dive. Of course, this needs some patience, but if you don't know, don't worry at all. You can go into the Power BI support page and submit the ticket and they will have an agent that can help you with your problem. The last thing that I want to talk is what to identify when you are copying and paste the code. Usually we recommend people just use the identified first hash key because it's a very quick and easy, but sometimes it will not work. The reason is, for example, if you are going to use a data space as a new data source and your old data source is Excel, you should remove promote header as well because promote header is Excel thing. It is not a database thing. So that will not work. So you can go into your code and delete the steps accordingly. So usually we ask that for the initial load, Power BI will automatically generate some code. You can just copy and paste those initial ones. And of course you can do some deep dive from the advanced editor into your apply steps because they are always one-to-one -one relationship. Source is matching this source. This sheet two is matching the navigation. Promote header matching promote header. So you can use your both front end, which is your apply steps, and your back end, which is the advanced editor M query, to identify and troubleshoot to make sure your new data source can fit in your old data source file. And the last thing is double check this in. After you modify your code, just make sure everything after this in is equal to what is before the in and before the equal sign. And that's it. And that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching and please let me know if you have any questions or comments. And we will see you in the next video.